Is the Bible more important than Jesus? Well, that depends on how you define Jesus. You see, if Jesus is a figment of your imagination, if you go to some religious organization called a church, and they have their definition of Jesus there, and you don't carry Bibles to church or whatever else, then I'm sure your uh, <clears throat> Jesus is more important than Scripture. Um, but we're Bible-believing Christians here. So you see, the most important physical possession we have on this earth is our King James Bible. It is not uh, Jesus in terms of physically. All right? Now, spiritually, obviously, we're saved by Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross. But we wouldn't know about any of that if it wasn't for the King James Bible. In fact, if we didn't have our King James Bible, we might be confusing Satan with Jesus. You see, as we read our King James Bible, Jesus is called the angel of the Lord. Satan is called, he appears as an angel of light. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Satan is a lion that walks about seeking whom he may devour. Um, Jesus has a church. Satan has a church. Jesus has a city. Satan has a city. Huh. You see, that's why it's so important to have a physical book that we can hold in our hands as our final authority and not just make believe what we think about Jesus and say, well, he's much more important than written scripture. But I did my study assuming that some people might get what I'm saying, and of course they did not. Uh, the new version, modern church people are some of the most judgmental, bigoted, narrow-minded, hate mongers out there, very intolerant people. And um, they'll hate you if you stand for the King James Bible. And uh, over the years, I've had a lot of experience with these people. I used to be a modern church new version user, so I'm very familiar with the movement. It is a satanic cult that these people are part of. But part of the ministry the Lord has given me over the years has been to judge, to put truth out there specifically in such a way that when people come along, they see it, they reject it, and ultimately bring themselves into judgment. Um, he that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13. Um, when you answer a video simply because you've seen the title, then God's judgment actually falls upon you. It's folly and shame to you. So it's a very important thing to actually listen to a sermon and consider the scriptures that are given. So what I did with my former study about the uh, you know, Jesus doesn't save you, the Bible does. You wouldn't understand salvation without the Bible. It's simple, and all these modern church people, they are so used to going to their satanic buildings, which have no basis in Scripture, but hey, that's not a standard for them. They go, they don't carry a Bible. It's just flashed up on the screen, so to them, they're, they're basically Dark Age Catholics is all that they are. Dark Age Catholics didn't have Bibles, they don't have Bibles. That's why they are in the dark. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. There I go quoting scripture again. I know. Terrible. But I've been dealing with some new version people, and that's why I preach that subject, or that, that on, the, on that subject. I preach that sermon because I know the mindset of the new versionist. The new versionist says there is no final authority. There is no absolute truth. It's all just we create our own God according to our own denomination or the particular beliefs that we like or whatever else. There's no thus saith the Lord. There's no perfect standard written today. Um, and I don't have time for people like that. Okay, I rebuke them. I put a video out there to bring them into judgment. If you don't watch them, if, if you don't watch the video that I did before, if you don't watch this video the whole way through in its entirety, you will answer to God because I'm using the word of God to rebuke you. There's power in this book. I've seen it for years and years and years. And I will continue to use the power of God through the scriptures to judge and rebuke the wicked lost people out there. That study had a few scriptures in it. It wasn't really extensive. This one, on the other hand, is going to be quite extensive, and it's going to judge the heathen, the professing Christians, and it's going to encourage you if you are a Bible-believing Christian. Um, this has been a great encourage, encouragement to me as I went through the scriptures. Um, it's going to be a really good study on is the Bible more important than Jesus? All right. Jesus went back up to heaven and he left us with nothing, right? No, Jesus left us with his word and there's power here. 
It's funny because in the end times there were uh, there's people that uh, having a form of the of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. What is the power in the life of a Christian? Your personal feelings and preferences. That's there's no power there. You have no more power over any other religious organization or called out there. The power is here. This is the power. Isaiah chapter 29. Let's start out here. We're going to see how just how important this book really is. We're going to go through a lot of scriptures today. I'm going to try to go through them quickly. Keep my comments to a minimum. Because I'm going to let the, the word of God judge and destroy the wicked church people of America. Um, judgment is coming. They've already failed the test. They already failed and conformed to the world in the last two years. Um, and now their damnation is coming very soon. They're going to be judged. These all these people that believe in Jesus and everything else, and yet hate this blessed book. Oh, your your damnation's coming, and it's coming rapidly. And I'm going to show you the scriptures to prove it. And do you want to shut it off? Go ahead, narrow-minded bigot. Shut the study off. Don't actually look at the scriptures. Okay. I'm going to show you how God judges nations, not because they reject Jesus Christ, but because they reject the written word of God. And for all the little smarties out there, oh, but Jesus is the manifest word. Yeah, if you had actually watched my first study, I talked about that. But the manifest word only appears seven times in the New Testament. Okay. Uh, yes, I know the scriptures. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13 and 14. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, oh, I love Jesus. And with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Not by the word of God, it's by the precept of men. The little doctrinal things and, and the, the, the things we do at our church. My pastor doesn't talk the way he does, you know. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. All these guys, I'm a scholar. I'm a New Testament textual critic. I can go through and I can take the Nestle's text and show you the many places where the King James Bible is not accurately translated. And all this says, yet they're going to perish. They're going to perish. I'll be getting more into that. Proverbs 30, verse 8 through 13. Now go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. Is this written or the manifest? It's written. Okay, verse 9, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, like all the modern church people. Church buildings are not in the, in the scriptures, anywhere in the scriptures. You're disobeying God when you go to a church building, whether you like it or not. I mean, God is not a fool. He didn't forget to put it in there or something like that. Church buildings were created as a result of the Protestant Reformation, copying them from Roman Catholicism. Verse 10, which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, prophesy unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. You go to the average church building, that's exactly what they're doing. They're prophesying deceit. They're going to, they get their prophecy from Fox News or something if they're conservative or CNN or something if they're liberal, you know, church building or whatever else. They're wicked. Verse 11, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word. Right here. And trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. Therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. This nation right now is about, you know, two seconds to midnight, as the old saying goes. I mean, we are right at the brink of just being destroyed. I mean, we have to print, you know, multiple trillions of dollars just to keep the country going and stay afloat and everything else. It's never going to turn into hyperinflation or, or any kind of a problem or they're, you know, yeah, the supply chains are not only breaking down, they're broken, they're, they're pretty much shot. Yes, we're destroying lots of food, and, and yes, you know, we you know can't produce enough oil to keep the country going, and you, yeah, but, you know, everything's going to be fine. They're lying. But why did God turn on this nation? 
because this nation turned on God's word. That's why. Jeremiah chapter 6. Go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6, beginning in verse 9. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall throughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back thine hand as a grape gatherer into the baskets. You say, well, this is Old Testament. This is Old Testament. Just pay attention. We'll be getting to the New Testament and showing that what happened to Jerusalem and Israel back here in the Old Testament is going to happen again to the church. I'm going to show it to you. Verse 10. I'm going to give you a sure word of prophecy. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. You make fun of the King James Bible. Literally had my older brother write to me and he said, You're KJV only garbage. Bible believing Christianity is garbage. This book is a reproach. You don't like this book. All you modern church people out there, you don't like this book. This book gets in the way of your life, doesn't it? Don't even tell me about it. <laughs> they have no delight in it. You don't delight in this book. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. Oh, you shouldn't say stupid. I'm full of the fury of the Lord. I'm weary, weary with holding in. I can't wait to see your destruction. I pray for it on a daily basis. You wicked people out there. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together, for even the husband and the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days, and their houses shall be turned unto others. Study just basic economics. All these people, they come out and they buy these houses for super inflated prices because the big hedge funds and Big companies and things are taking the prices way up. And Zillow did a little scheme thing where they were buying houses for way more than they were worth to try to drive the market up and everything else. Look at the dis disparity between wage earnings and household prices. I think it's average wage right now in America is something like $38,000. Average house price, $500,000. The ratio is supposed to be one to four. Whatever your yearly income is, you know, then you pay four times that. And that should be the cost of your house. I don't think it's that anymore. It's not nowhere even close to that. What's going to happen? Their houses are going to be taken away from them and given to others. All a nation of debtors is a nation of slaves. Crazy. Verse 12. And their houses shall be turned unto others with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out mine hand, my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And you can get it through debt here in America. Again, credit card debt right now is approaching $1 trillion of personal credit card debt. Just checked it yesterday. Over $900 billion in personal credit card debt. And this is a godly nation. Those new versions that you use, uh, they help this nation become more godly. And all the church buildings and all the multi-millions and millions of dollars in church building real estate, and it's helped this country? No, it's destroyed this country that my ancestors helped to found in the early 1700s. And from the prophet, even under, under the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. Standing up in, in pulpits and they preach out of Bibles that they don't even believe in. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Donald Trump, Trump came out, the Jesuit-trained devil that he was, pervert and everything else, and he comes out back when he was, uh, you know, the uh, little puppet president of this country, and he says, It's the best economy ever. <laughs> really? What's quantitative easing all about then? Constantly having to inject more money into the economy to keep this country going. I don't think that's the strongest economy ever. Peace, peace, everything's fine. Best economy ever. It's never been better as the nation's imploding. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination, America? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall at the time that I visit them. They shall be cast down, saith the Lord. 
This nation is not going to survive World War III. There's no possible way America is coming out of World War III. This country is finished. And it will be finished on purpose, by design. You can see that. They're creating a famine right now with all the things that they're doing. Our military isn't even allowed to win wars. They use depleted uranium as ammunition, killing our own soldiers. Hey, we're going to put you in Afghanistan for 10 years. Now leave, and we'll just leave billions of dollars worth of stuff over there for the Taliban to take, the supposed enemy of the government that we were fighting all that time, and now we'll just, oh, here you go. It's yours. Helicopters, weapons, all kinds of good stuff like that. Verse 16, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. That old King James Bible. Ask for it. You need it. The new versions, they failed at what they were supposed to do. This is the book right here. Do you want it? But they said, we will not walk therein. We're not interested in doing it the Bible way. We're not interested in the King James Version. We're not interested in any of that old stuff. You see, people get ticked off at me and they say, hey, America, like it or leave it, buddy. No, you leave the country that my ancestors helped to found. My ancestors came here in 1720. I go way back. I could go back in a time machine to my ancestors. They might think I'm dressed a little bit funny, but I'd have the same Bible and the same beliefs as them. My ancestors were Anabaptists. So I'm not the one that should be leaving this nation. You should be if you're a new version user. Verse 17, also I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Therefore hear ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. Listen, I love Jesus. Jesus is my Savior. He's my homeboy. And uh, I, the Bible's fine, but you don't need the Bible to have a relationship with Jesus. Uh, then why doesn't it say they haven't hearkened unto Jesus? They haven't hearkened unto my words. Jeremiah 7, beginning in verse 22. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. Okay, say verse 23. I was looking at the wrong one there. Um, but this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. How do you walk in the ways that God's commanded you if you don't have a Bible? You can be as God's knowing good and evil, perhaps, you know, Satan's lie to Eve in the Garden of Eden. Verse 24, But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ears, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. <sighs> I love that. Oh, we're progressive and everything. No, you're getting worse. Things are getting worse. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, unto this day I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Each generation gets worse and worse. Verse 27. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished, and is cut off from their mouth. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. John 17, 17. What is truth, if you have no King James Bible? What is it? Well, my church and my Jesus and I don't need a Bible. I have my own Jesus. Thank you very much. 
You're disgusting, and God's judgment and wrath is going to come upon you. Jeremiah 11. You say, well, if they don't hear your words, then, then what are you doing bothering to speak to them? It's simple. It's called judgment. I'm going to bring judgment upon these wicked heathen. That's why I'm continuing to preach. I want God's judgment to hit them and hit them hard. Jeremiah 11, verse 22 and 23. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will punish them. Now look at this. Here's a good one. The young men shall die by the sword. They die in war. Their sons and their daughters shall die by famine. You want a prophecy for the very near future? Right there, verse 22. That's what God's going to do to this nation. Huh. 22, verse 22. What year is it? 2022? Nothing to it, of course. And there shall be no remnant of them, for I will bring evil upon the men of Anathoth, even the year of their visitation. Right now, the Selective Service, the U.S. Selective Service has put out a tweet um, saying that they're, uh, in the event of the draft being reinstated, we are going to have some you know, things there for conscientious objectors that they can do and whatever else. Why are they talking about reinstating the draft? Could it be that they're just waiting for China to invade Taiwan? And then we put sa sanctions on China. China puts sanctions right back on us. <coughs> and um, all of a sudden, World War III gets started. Some kind of a thing provokes World War III, some kind of Gulf of Tonkin or um, sinking of the Lusitania or you know Pearl Harbor or any other thing like that that you want to make it into. If you, haven't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to study true history. Um, some kind of an event happens and all of a sudden, war! The media comes out, we need war! It's time for war! Oh, you know, whatever. If they're really smart, they could actually bring back Donald Trump and then he could say, Joe Biden's finished, it's no good, you know, and, and whatever else. Don't know if they would do that or not. You never know. They have plenty of little cards in their hand to play. But um, World War III gets started. Hey, draft is here. Young men, 18 to 25, Time to go into the military here. Oh, congratulations, you've volunteered for war. Well, you've been voluntold for war. Um, come on in here, roll up your sleeve. Time to do the hokey pokey. Wham. Oh, oh okay. I guess this is all right. Oh, sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, you see the military you know, created their own uh, special little uh, pokey pokey there. The uh, Walter Reed... Army Institute of Research or something like that, I think it was, um, created their own, even more powerful. And so now the soldiers, they go out there to battle and they're starting to run and the aggression and the blood pressure goes way up and everything else from being in battle. Oh, oh. Down they go. Just a theory. Um, congratulations, uh, your son died in line of duty. Thank you for your service, son's service died a, a, a hero and whatever else. Yeah, they'll die by the sword, in other words. And if you think young men in this country age 18 to 25 can take on Chinese or Russian troops, huh, I don't think so. Maybe if they were playing video games or something, they might win then, but uh, not good. And um, while they're over there getting slaughtered as cannon fodder, um, the young sons and daughters are going to be here dying of famine. Joe Biden comes out and, well, there's, you know, not really any kind of, you know, this conspiracy about food shortages and whatever else. And a couple months later, there are some, you know, there is some food instability and, and uh, you know, it could cost us some things. And, you know, <laughs> what's going on? Well, it's the Illuminati. The Illuminati has been planning this for years to bring in their new... Or it could actually be God punishing this nation. Just a thought. Just a thought. I'll go with the second option. It's God. Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 10. This evil people. Look out when God says that people are evil. This evil people which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the imagination of their heart and walk after other gods to serve them and to worship them, shall even be as this girdle, which is good for nothing. You know what uh, 2020 and 2021 proved about uh, American church people? Proved that they're good for nothing. Nobody could heal anything. Let's close down. 
See? Um, they're good for nothing. Why? Which refuse to hear my words. It's so amazing to me. I've met so many of these professing Christians over the years and you know, they'll come up, oh, I see your bumper stickers. That's great. Praise the Lord. Or, you know, see your shirt or whatever else. And, they, and um, I'm a Christian too. He said, oh, really? And you start talking to them and pretty before long, it's getting in angry and they're getting mad at you. Well, I speak in tongues. There's nothing wrong with speaking in tongues. Well, I use a new version. There's nothing wrong with that. And well, this and that, you know, they'll get mad at you. They're fierce. They're evil. Jeremiah 15. This one you're going to want to write down. This is a great encouragement. Jeremiah 15, verse 15 and uh, 15 through 17. Jeremiah 15, verse 15 through 17, as a great encouragement to my Bible believing brothers and sisters out there. O Lord, thou knowest, remember me and visit me and revenge me of my persecutors. Take me not away in thy long suffering. Know that for thy sake, I have suffered rebuke. God, here comes the judgment. It's, we're seeing it come on this nation. Oh Lord, remember me. Don't take me away in your long suffering, Lord. Please don't forget what I did for you. Don't forget how I've suffered your rebuke because of your name's sake. That should be our prayer. Hey, Lord, when the famine hits, when there's rioting and looting and all kinds of other stuff, Lord, remember me, please. I wasn't part of this nation. I was separate from these people. I would have changed. I would have witnessed to every single one of these people and I would have turned them to your word, but they would not hearken to you. Don't judge me along with these wicked heathen, Lord. And if there's any sin in me that would cause my judgment to come, be a, me be a partaker with the wicked, then Lord, please reveal it to me so I can get it out of my life. I don't want to go through your judgment. Verse 16, thy words were found. How many of us search for these words? Using new versions and going and asking preachers, and what's the difference between the Bible verse? Oh, there's no, it's not really a big deal. You know, that's a, that's a loaded question. Maybe you should go to a Bible college and get an answer to it. I ask you a simple question, and you look and you look, and finally you get to King James Bible and you say, wow, and you hear the arguments for the King James Bible and you think, this is what I've been looking for. Blessed book. Wow. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. They're more to be desired than my necessary food the Bible talks about. Is that the attitude of the average modern Christian? No, it isn't. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. Can you imagine a day without the King James Bible? I mean, seriously, can you, can you even fathom that? I was talking about this with my wife last night. I did the study yesterday, going through Scripture after Scripture, and just came upon this portion of Scripture. I have it highlighted in my Bible there in blue. And, and I said, can you imagine what life would be like if we didn't have the King James Bible? It's the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Just the world, oh, look at all the world has to offer. The world doesn't have anything to offer me. I've tried most of what the world had to offer. Give me the book. This is, the, this is everything to me. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. I am truly a Christian. I am of Christ. Church of the living God, whatever you want to say. I sat not in the assembly of the mockers. You know what modern church buildings are? They're mockers. They're there and they're lying about the Lord. They mock those of us that believe the King James Bible. Uh, no, thank you. I don't want anything to do with it. Sorry. I, um, I'm done. I don't want to sit with a bunch of mockers. I sat not, not with the, in the assembly of the mockers, nor rejoiced. I sat alone because of thy hand. Hmm. I sat alone. How many people are with you right now as you're watching this video? Are you alone? I can't tell you how many times I've heard from brothers and sisters in Christ and, brother, I'm the only one. I have no fellowship with anybody. It's just me and the Lord. 
That's why that uh, sermon by A.W. Tozer, I did a video about it, you know, the saint must walk alone. That was meant so much to me because you get saved, you realize how alone you really are. Um, we're not afraid of fellowship. I, I would love to be able to fellowship with the true brethren out there. Absolutely, I would love it. Um, but when you get right down to it and you go to these church buildings and whatever else, they're just social centers and, and things and, and filled with a lot of lost people. People that compromise and, and go along with ridiculous orders and mandates and whatnot that contradict the scriptures. Sorry, can't sit with you. But look at the rest of the verse. I sat alone because of thy hand, for thou hast filled me with love. Uh, no, thou hast filled me with indignation. <sighs> Go into this church building and you're going, well, I guess I'll try this one yet. I think I've been to every other one around. And, and uh, okay. Up there, there's an altar and it has IHS on it. Maybe they don't know. And, uh, there's a woman that has really short, like a buzz cut, hair over there and um okay well uh, you know and you start to hear this and you start to hear that and you go all right i'll get through the sermon you get through up there and the pastor says now the word here could be better translated i think another way that you could say this would be if you go to the greek and you go Ugh. all right i'm leaving i'm out of here you're filled with indignation I look out there at the world. I don't look at the world with love and say, ah, yeah, ah. I'm some kind of Teletubby. Uh, uh. Uh -uh. I look out there and I think, this is wicked. Well, come on out. You need to go out and socialize with people. I can't stand to be around them. I sat alone. God's filled me with his indignation. I want to see his judgment come and fall upon these wicked people. They're evil people. They don't hearken to the word of God. They hate this beloved book. I have nothing in common with them. I have no reason to go and sit with them. No, I don't want anything to do with them. I'm filled with indignation. I'd rather stay alone. Well, there are some bad things, but I think we need to just look past it. I think that we need to just go and have a good time at church and, uh, you know. Oh. Jen, or Jeremiah 19. Jeremiah 19. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it because they have hardened their necks that they might not hear my words. I love the Lord Jesus Christ more than anybody else, including my wife, including my son, friends, family, whatever. Jesus is first. He's number one. But I wouldn't know anything about Jesus if it wasn't for this book. And I am going to hearken to the words of this book. I'm not going to harden my neck. Hey, you know what? Can I show you something here from the Bible? Can I just... No, you know what? Don't you, don't even go there. I'm not looking. You know, talk to the hand. Neck looks kind of hard there, doesn't it? I'm not looking. Hmm. Jeremiah 26. Jeremiah chapter 26, beginning in verse 1. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came this word from the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Stand in the court of the Lord's house, and speak unto all the cities of Judah. This is back in the Old Testament when they actually had the Lord's house there. Nothing like that in the New Testament. Which came, come to worship in the Lord's house, all the words that I command thee to speak unto them, diminish not a word. Well, the, the King James Bible, it was good for its time, but it needs to be updated. And there's a few things that probably should just be taken out. Then you're not dealing with any kind of a thing that God's interested in. These are the words that he commands, and he says, diminish not a word. 
If so be, they will hearken and turn every man from his evil way, that I may repent me of the evil which I purpose to do unto them because of the evil of their doings. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, If ye will not hearken to me to walk in my law, which I have set before you, to hearken to the words of my servants the prophets, whom I sent unto you, both rising up early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened. Then will I make this house like Shiloh, and will make this city a curse to all the nations of this earth, of the earth. America's not in Bible prophecy, if you haven't noticed. Um, why is that? Well, because uh, this nation is going to be destroyed. Romans 11. The very best we could hope for is that the wicked are destroyed off of here and off this country and, and the Lord uh, preserves the righteous and lets some of us live here and live in peace. Just kind of worship the Lord and survive till the catching up of the body of Christ. That'd be kind of nice. But most people aren't going to make it. Let's just face it. Most people aren't going to make it. I mean, there are so many cycles that are all converging on one big point of crashing with the economy, mortgage forbearance, um, you know, moratoriums, eviction moratoriums, and everything else all coming to bear here this spring, and, and um, foreclosures, credit card debt. I mean, you, you go through the eco economic stuff, and then you get into the thing of famine, and you get into, you know, a lot of the electrical stuff that's coming out and whatever else, the high technology millimeter wave technology type of stuff and, and the damage that that's doing in whole areas where there's no bees left anymore. and I mean, some really bad stuff. And I could go on and on and on. It's not good. And it's going to all happen. Why? Well, because God curses a nation that uh, turns against his word. And you say, well, that, but you still, it's all Old Testament. You didn't prove anything. Romans chapter 11, verse 19 through 22. Thou wilt say, then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Written to a Christian. For if God spared not the natu natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell, severity, but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Hey, now I've wrestled with this passage for a very long time, and I say, what's it trying to say there and everything else? But uh, I really love what the Lord's been showing me on this whole thing here, because looking at Back through the book of Jeremiah and Isaiah, Jeremiah and things, and there's lamentations especially. God destroys a nation when they turn against his word. And what Paul is saying here to Christians, they're, you know, he's writing, you know, from Rome, and he's saying, uh, you better be careful. You stand by faith. You're supposed to, you know, continue in God's, you know, according to his word, living according to his word. And if you don't, you're going to be cursed, just like ancient Israel was. He'll cut you off. God had special covenants with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There were other things there. You better continue doing right. Because if you don't, even though God had special covenants with them, with the nation of Israel, God still destroyed them as a nation and scattered them. And God's going to do the same thing, I believe, very soon to America. Revelation 6, verse 9. This is all just in the, all back in the Bible times. It's the first century. We don't have the Bible anymore. We have no perfect Bible. Only The only perfect Bible that existed would have been the original autographs. And we don't have anything like that. So, you know, I don't know what point you're making. You know, you're using circular reasoning, using the Bible to prove the Bible or something like this. All the stuff that these wicked atheistic philosophers come up with that call themselves Christians. Let me show you something. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, written word, and for the testimony which they held. Now, if you're a preterist, you'll say, well, um, the, the events of the book of Revelation were simply Jewish poetry, and they've all actually been fulfilled and whatever else. Oh, really? Um, just poetry and, and things? 
um, then why is it that we see the central bank digital currencies hooked up to social credit score in, implemented in China and now coming here to the, to the United States and to Europe and most other countries as well? We see a need for you know, total digital currencies and things like this to help us out of our present economic woes. No man might buy or sell save he that had the central bank digital currency. Oh no, it's the mark, but it uh, starts out as a central bank digital currency. And if you're a bad little citizen, then they just shut it off. Already happening, by the way. I actually heard of a woman, some talk show host or whatever else, and I guess she got on antidepressants or some kind of medication, and they locked up her bank account. And she said, why? And they said, because you're a danger to yourself and others. <laughs> okay, I'm more dangerous now. You just took away my money, or at least locked up my bank account. That's what they want to do. And I'll be doing a video here today, uh, later on, another video, on how to fight the whole central bank digital currencies. But um, if it's just Jewish poetry that happened there in the first century and it's Book of Revelations not to be taken literally, um, then why are we seeing Mark of the Beast technology being formed right now? And they want to implement it in the future, another year or two. Huh. Paving the way for what will ultimately be the Mark of the Beast. Oh, but it's just, that, you know, it all is fulfilled. No, it wasn't. If you're a Bible-believing Christian, you have to be premillennial, millennial um, And you look, have to look at this thing here and you say, ah, this is the book of Revelations yet to come in the future. It's coming. Well, if it's coming in the future, then how can people be slain for the Word of God, the written Word of God, if it no longer exists? Why doesn't it just say, and they were slain for some translations that were pretty good, not perfect, but pretty good. They're slain for the Word of God. It's future fulfillment. Do you have the Word of God? Revelation 1, verse 3. How important is this book, this King James Bible? Would you be willing to die for your good news for modern man or your message or your ESV, NIV? I wouldn't die for those things. Soldiers come and they knock on the door and they say, bring us your Bibles. I'll say, oh, okay, yeah, here you go. <laughs> Here's an NIV. Here's a message. There you go. And they say, we're taking this from you. Oh, oh that's a oh, boo-hoo. <laughs> you, you going to come from my King James Bibles? Now we have a different story. That won't happen. Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Why doesn't it say blessed are they that love Jesus or something? Is Jesus important? Well, obviously, yeah, he's God. Sure, very important. But the blessing comes upon those who read his written word. Written. Revelation 3. Revelation chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. But the word doesn't matter. It's not really important. You know, it's just as long as you understand about Jesus and you believe in Jesus and, and things, so then it, the Bible doesn't really matter. I realize I'm I'm preaching to a lot of these people. They're just they're headed for judgment and the Lord's using me to judge them before they get their final damnation. I get that. But if there's still some that have enough sense to listen and to actually look at the scriptures and start to say, huh. You know, maybe I better get right with God here. I hope you do. I don't hate you. I'm not your enemy. James chapter 1. I hope you wake up before it's too late. James chapter 1, verse 21. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted written, in other words, word, which is able to save your souls. 
Well, I can be saved without the Bible. I don't need the Bible to be saved. Uh, and let me just say this. I, I did make a little bit of an error in my last study. I said I got saved and I was using an NIV. Not technically, no, I did not. Uh, I was using an NIV, come to, came to understand about salvation, went out, got a King James Bible, and then I got saved. Okay, that's when I really fell down on my knees and called out to the Lord and said, God, I need to be saved. So yes, I was using an NIV as I was hearing about salvation and understanding I'm actually not saved. I'm a false, modern, professing Christian. I was using an NIV, but I did go out and get a King James Bible before the Lord saved me. This exact one actually in my hands. Verse 22, but be doers of the word and not hearers only like the modern church people. I don't need to carry a, a, church, a Bible to church. I don't want people thinking I'm weird or something. I don't want to look like some Bible basher or Bible thumper or whatever else. You coward. <laughs> Deceiving your own self. Me afraid to carry a book? Really? <laughs> Deceiving your own selves. People that are not, are not a doer of the word, but a hearer only. They're deceiving themselves. They're not saved. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. They're just faking it, in other words. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Well, I mean, why wouldn't you want to read the King James Bible? Why wouldn't you want to believe the King James Bible? Do you realize the blessings that come upon you when you do? Oh, I'm good. I'd rather use multiple contradicting versions and just choose which one I think is the truth and try to read the Nestle's text and, and you know, go and with all my scholar buddies and everything else and make fun of King James only people, call their beliefs garbage and, <laughs> and God's blessing you. Uh, no, he isn't. I know modern Christians. They're nuts. They're falling apart. A lot of them are on antidepressants. Just going around, well, we, need a, we need a special feminar. Uh, feminar, yeah. You know, women's seminar, you know, feminar. Uh, we need marriage counseling, and we need to have movie night, and we need spaghetti nights, and oh, I don't know what to do. Uh, yeah. I've been around modern Christians. I was raised around them, raised among them. They're crazy. Wife swapping, dirty, filthy, perverts. And you want me to be part of that. <laughs> yeah. Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 12. Yea, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That's why a lot of these people don't want the King James Bible. They put it in a low position. They don't hearken to it. They despise the Word of God. They don't want to suffer persecution. I don't want to look weird. <laughs> but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And they find the best ones, the best, the most evil men out there are in church buildings. I've seen that thing for years. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Oh, I, I believe in Christ Jesus, but I just don't need the Bible. It's not what it says right there. Thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. The holy scriptures make you wise unto salvation. Not just a simple, I believe in Jesus. Well, who's that? Well, he's this and he's that. Where'd you get that from? Well, I heard it you know, from my church. Where'd they get it from? Well, the, the senior pastor there heard it from the pastor that came before him. Well, he, where'd he get it? You have to go back to the Bible eventually. Verse 16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It's good for you. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Why don't you want to be truly furnished unto all good works? It doesn't make any sense to me. <clears throat> verse, chapter 4, verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Do you have the word? Preach it. 
Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. How do you get doctrine out of just I know Jesus? I pray to Jesus, and you know, how do you get doctrine? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Hello there, modern church people. That's what these wicked people are. Look at the comments. You'll see them. You'll see these wicked people. Doing whatever they can to try to destroy others' faith in the King James Bible. I'm so, I'm so familiar. Oh, you obviously don't understand New Testament textual criticism. Oh, I understand it very well. Believe me, I've studied it for many years. Um, all the books here, a lot of books on the issue, a whole bunch over here. Yes, I know it quite well. I have the different Greek texts down there, Hebrew text right there. I know all about New, text, New Testament textual criticism. I know about all the manuscript evidence and all that other stuff. And, you know, you get into debates with these these new version, you know, devils, and what they'll do is they'll just take you around in circles. Where was the Bible before 1611? Well, are you saying that only the English-speaking people have a perfect Bible? Well, what about the changes between 1611 and 1769? Are you aware of the fact that there are some places where the King James Bible translators use the Vaticanus manuscript evidence, like reading there and things? Are you aware of the fact that Erasmus actually was around sir what's your perfect standard well i think do you have one well i understand what you're saying and i do appreciate the king james bible and i have used the king james bible and a bunch of wicked people somebody's parked in my lane here uh second timothy chapter 2 verse 14 Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. That's what happens when you mess around with these new version people. You're just striving about words. It's a waste of your time. Um, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Can you divide Jesus? If Jesus is so important to you modern professing Christians out there, how do you divide Jesus? How do you study Jesus? Can you see him? <laughs> you can study this book. You can rightly divide this book dispensationally. Crazy. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have, have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. How do you depart from iniquity when you don't know what iniquity is? You just kind of decide on your own? What your church tells you? You need to have a standard. But it's interesting. Shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Okay? Let's say that King James Bible-believing Christians, King James onlyism, is a profane and vain babbling. All right? Um, I believe that this book is God's perfect word, and I'm going to live according to the Scriptures. How will that increase unto more ungodliness? Well, you'll be walking around quoting verses of scriptures that are in you know, old English and Elizabethan English. And that will lead to more ungodliness. How? Well, because the lost world won't be able to relate to the Bible. And so they'll just get worse and worse. Uh, no, actually, I've seen lost people have more respect for the King James Bible. Knew a, a wicked man the one time's name was Chuck James. And he was actually one of the descendants of, I think he was either Frank, I think it was Frank James. Frank and Jesse James, the James gang. Literally, I'm not joking. And this guy, he was a Marine Corps veteran of Vietnam, fought in Vietnam. Foul mouth, 
wicked guy and whatever else got in an argument the one time. I had a friend at the time that was telling me about this. Some modern Christian guy that was working there, new version user, the whole deal. And he was talking about how that the King James Bible has errors in it. And Chuck James got mad at him. He said, it doesn't have errors in it. Hey, so you don't talk that way about God's book. That book's perfect. I know it is. He wasn't offended by the archaic language of it. He knew what it was. A lot of lost people, they know what this book is. Are you kidding me? They know exactly what the King James Bible is. How is my defense of the King James Bible going to lead to more ungodliness? But now let's look about the new versions. Well, um, my King James Bible is no good. No. Actually, a better translation would be the English Standard Version. That's the most literal. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, okay, I'll, I'll get an ESV. Um, see here, where's my ESV at? Uh, extreme, extremely Stupid Version, I think is what it's called. I can't see it right now. Is that it down there? No, that's New King James. <laughs> I don't have it here. Where in the world did I put that stupid thing at? Okay, we'll go with the... Um, okay, we'll just say New King James Version. Can't find the ESV right now, but... New King James Version. Okay? This one's more literal. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Well, thanks. So this is perfect then? Well, no, I didn't say it was perfect. I just said it's more literal. Okay. Um, well, what's the deal? I don't understand. Well, you see, uh, no translation is really inspired. And, you know, what we have here is we have, over here we have the Nestle's 28th edition. See, right there, we have the Nestle's 28th edition. And, and now, this is the Greek. That's probably the best and, and the oldest, certainly the old, two based on the two oldest and best manuscripts. So, um, you really, you know, that's really what you should study. Oh, so... This isn't perfect, but but this one is? Well, technically, no. You see, um, the Nestle's text, it's very good, but it's a work in progress, you know? And so it's going to get more refined as time. We find more manuscripts, we'll have to add them in there, and then the text will change again, and we'll have the 29th edition, and then the 30th edition, and then, you know, we'll just keep making editions and things. Oh, well then... What is God's perfect word? Well, that would have been the original autographs, and we don't have those. So, technically, <laughs> you mean there is no perfect standard? Shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. There's no perfect word of God on the planet. Hmm. The original autographs are lost. Well, then who's really to say what's right and wrong? You see, me standing for this King James Bible is not a profane and vain babbling. Me standing for this book increases godliness. I start to study this book. I start to rightly divide this book. I let this book judge my sins. And I clean up my life. More godliness comes as a result of this blessed book right here. But when you go with the new version philosophy, this right here, it increases unto more ungodliness. I find it funny that every single time we come out with these new versions, more ungodly things happen. Someday I'm going to chart that whole thing out, but it's interesting. 1901 revised version, or the American Standard Version, excuse me. Revised version was over in England in 1881. I have an original copy, wherever it is right now. I think it's up there. Um, American Standard Version comes out, 1901. World War I, some more new versions come out. World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War. 1973, officially, the New Testament of the NIV is done. It's released in 1974. 1974, the same year that Roe v. Wade comes out. Hmm. Every single time these new versions come out, more wickedness follows. God's judgment gets closer and closer. More people suffer. More people die. You know why? Because God hates these new versions. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Go there. It's 
See, this much scripture, the, the new version people have, they lasted maybe five minutes into the thing and they're done already. So it's just my brothers and sisters in Christ pretty much with me right now. New version people, that, you know, the narrow-minded bigots that they are, they, they're going. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 3 and through 5. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. There's a lot of stuff there about the word, isn't there? He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words. <laughs> questions and strifes of words? Whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. You know what the average modern churchgoer thinks? They think that gain, in terms of liabilities, they think it's a measure of godliness. Look at how big our church building is. Look how many people we run in Sunday school. Look at all the people. Look at all, look at the differences we're making and look at all the people that come in it's all debt based <laughs> you know i mean hey i could grow some multi huge big mega building if i wanted to wanted to sell my soul to the devil like joel osteen or somebody like that i could grow some huge big place absolutely get some kind of a, a bunch of bank loans coming in and you know get the freemasons involved and whoever else you know kind of get the money going up there then to sponsor me and things and Start telling people that good times are coming. God has a plan for you. You know, the whole thing. <laughs> that makes me want to vomit. But I can do that. Look at our amazing, powerful empire here. Oh, the church is growing and it's, it's and all this other stuff. It's liabilities. Those aren't assets. <laughs> they don't understand that stuff. It's amazing. They say that they're increased with goods and rich and have need of nothing. But they don't know that they're miserable, poor, blind, naked. And they make God sick. The church of Laodicea, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Revelation chapter 3. That's what a lot of these people are. How could we be wrong when we're so prosperous? <laughs> you're not prosperous. You're a debtor slave. You don't even own the things that you... You don't own the car that you're driving or the house that you live in. A lot of these people, they don't even own the clothes on their back. It's all debt-based. Go to the grocery store, you know... It's a guy at the grocery store the other day bought a bag of cheese curls and a two-liter bottle of Diet Coke, and he paid for it with a credit card. I'm thinking, man, you, you can't even buy your food with cash? God bless America. Yeah, yeah we're doing good, let me tell you. Second, Th Second Thessalonians chapter 2. We'll begin in verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. The body of Christ has to be taken out of the way before the Antichrist can be unleashed. Okay? So there's no, well, we're going to go into the Great Tribulation, <laughs> whatever that is. No, we're not going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? I've proved that thing so many times over the years and I still get posties coming along and we're going into it. <laughs> yeah. Verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Funny because he's not using the word of God. Isn't that interesting? Antichrist comes and he has power and signs and lying wonders. Look at the wonderful things I can do. By peace he shall destroy many. Look at all this nice stuff I'm doing. He's not quoting the book. He's killing people that have the book. Verse 10, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17, Jesus speaking. Sanctify them through me. I am truth. No, he says that the word is truth. These people don't receive a love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Last two years proved that. It's already begun. It's just going to get worse. God's going to keep sending them more and more uh, delusion. The delusion will get stronger as time goes by, and they will believe a lie. 
that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, because, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning, beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word. Word. Did you see it there? Word and work. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified. You're supposed to glorify the word of the Lord? Even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. All men have not faith. Um, they make up things of their own little inventions up here. They don't have faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. <clears throat> For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye receive the word of God, lowercase w, again it's written word, which ye... Heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. I mean, the whole new version debate can really be settled pretty easily. All you have to do is just go out and get a new version. Say, okay, this versus this. Now, Lord, you show me which one is your book. You show what happens when I start to read this one. I'll put this one down. And I'll read this one. Okay? Oh, things aren't going so good. I'll put this one down and I'll read this one and see how things go. I have a lot of experience in that. Okay? Um, for 25 years of my life, I mean, I wasn't reading when I was just born, but 25 years up to the time I was 25, 26, somewhere in there, um, when I got saved, uh, I was using new versions. First, the New American Standard Version, and then the NIV. Um, my life was miserable. It was a wreck. I wasn't even saved. I mean, it was, I was terrible. I was not at all living according to the Scriptures. And then the Lord brought this blessed book into my life, and it changed me. It changed everything. And God has just blessed us and blessed us and blessed us. And it's given me fellowship of the Spirit with other brethren and I mean, how many amazing things I've seen over the years, just miraculous type of stuff. Don't tell me there's no difference between this one and the new versions. There's a major difference. <clears throat> it works if you believe it. It doesn't work if you don't. Acts chapter 19. It's like a joke I heard the one time. This... Uh, <clears throat> guy's driving down the road works at a chainsaw dealership and he sees this old man out along the road and he's got an axe and he's chopping wood and this uh chainsaw salesman he pulls over and he says hey buddy he says you know i got a bunch of brand new saws in the back here he said, yeah, you really should have a you know upgrade to a chainsaw he said here you know and and uh the guy says well, i've never seen one of these and he said yeah he said give it a try stop in at the shop if you know i'll let you try it for a few days stop in at the shop you want to buy it i'll give you a real good deal on it you know, okay? The old man says, well, yeah, hey, thank you. Thank you very much. A couple days go by. This old man comes in, clunks this saw down, and he says, this thing's stupid. doesn't work. doesn't work a bit. And the guy says, well, I don't understand. It's brand new. And he said, I tried it. I tried it. I tried it a couple times. It's a lot slower than my axe. Stupid thing. And the guy says, well, let me just take a look at it. Just make sure it's running good and everything. And he starts it up. And, he's, eh, and the old man says, what's that noise? He wasn't even running it, trying to chop wood with it, in other words. A little joke there, but uh, there's a lot of people that uh, they try to use this book, and they don't believe it. 
and it doesn't work. And they say, this old King James Bible? Well, yeah, it's what we use at our church, and yeah, it's, you know, it doesn't really work, though. You know, I've tried. I've tried to use it. It's just, you say, do you believe it? Believe it? Well, no, I don't. Then it won't work. Just that simple. Acts 19, verse 18 through 20. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. That's a lot of money. These occult books are oftentimes worth a lot of money. So mightily grew Jesus and prevailed. The faith of Jesus or something. No, uh, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Is God interested in seeing this book grow? Is God interested in seeing more and more people get a hold of this book? More copies sold than any other book in history? Is God interested in that? Yes. You know why God blessed America so much? Because this book grew and was multiplied and prevailed. It was a mighty book at one point in time. It's not anymore. Acts chapter 13. Two more places to turn to here and then we'll be done for today. Acts chapter 13, verse 46 through 49. Paul and Barnabas speaking to the Jews here. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it on from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Why didn't he mention Jesus? Jesus saves? Well, sure. But you wouldn't know about him if it wasn't for this book. You see? And a lot of these Jews that they're speaking to, they would have seen Jesus. They would have known about Jesus. They might have been there watching him die on the cross. Paul wasn't there saying, hey, let me tell you. You remember what you saw? Reading the scriptures. I'm telling you the word of God. You rejected that, therefore, you're finished. You're unworthy of eternal, of everlasting life. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. They glorified scripture? Yeah. Yeah. And as many as were ordained, ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. Publishing the word. It spreads out. I mean, the first thing that happens when you get saved, I want a Bible. What does the Bible say? I'd like to read. Oh boy, and this, this book, it becomes very interesting to you. But we'll finish it here. Assuming that a lot of the new versionist, you know, modern church people probably are just going to skip to the end to say, I watched the whole thing. I watched two minutes of the beginning and, you know, 30 seconds of the end. Okay, well, I'll have to get them at the end here, the 30 second mark. Revelation 22. Verse 18 and 19. Revelation 22, verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. And as I stated in my other video, this Nestle's text right here, you get back to the book of Revelation and all of a sudden Codex B disappears from the critical apparatus at the bottom. You say, I don't believe you, okay? I like it when people don't believe me because they think I'm stupid. I think a lot of them are dumb too. But um, I can show it. Down here, you have the critical apparatus down at the bottom. Here. Text up there. Critical apparatus down here. And you will not see Codex B mentioned anywhere. You know why? Because the Vaticanus manuscript removes the entire book of Revelation. Huh. Do you think that, that might fall under the curse there in Revelation 22, verse 19? Mm-hmm. But 
hey, God doesn't care about his word. You know, it's a good book and whatever else, according to these wicked modern people. Um, then why would he put such a stern warning in the end of it that you're not to add to or take away from it? So I hope that that's been an encouraging study to everybody out there. I have a few more studies to do today, so I'm not going to continue on here with a lot of rabbit trails and other things I'd like to say. Um, but you see these people and they come out and they say, well, you know, the Bible's important, but not really that important and whatever else. Just don't want to even waste time with them. They're on their way to hell. Um, so... That will be it, and I'm going to be doing some other studies today, three other studies, so uh, we will see you in those future studies. Stand by the blessed book, brethren. You have the right book if you're using the King James Bible. You don't need to mess around with Greek or Hebrew or anything else. Um, God brought together the most brilliant men, worked through them to give us this blessed book right here. And you can try this book and test this book and read it and believe it, and you will be blessed. And I'll be talking about that in one of the future studies coming up here. Actually, a few of them. So we'll see you in those future studies. Um, thank you to all out there who support the ministry. We greatly appreciate that. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214 Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.